Good evening and welcome to the highlights of the Women's Scottish Cup. We are here at Hampden Park, the venue for the semi-finals and final of this year's revamped competition. Tonight, we'll be taking you through all the best of the action from the fourth round, and I'll be doing it in the company of Suzanne Winters, who won this competition three times in your career. I did, daily, some great memories. Yeah, I can imagine. Right, well, back to this year's competition. We start our roundup at Gussie Park in an all top flight affair between Dundee United and Hearts. Hearts have been going very well in SWPL1 and we're hoping to take their league form into the Scottish Cup. The road to Hampden starts now for Dundee United and Hearts as their Scottish Cup journey gets underway. Maybe the hosts to kick us off here at Gussie Park. Eve Donald. Under a little bit of pressure, Amy Anderson gets the toe poke in and now Georgia Timms is bearing down on goal. Georgia Timms clips the crossbar and Amy Anderson tries to keep it alive. Fraser does win the foul for Dundee United, but what an opportunity for Georgia Timms. First sighting in the game, she just bides her time, catches it oh so sweetly. Harps are patient in their build-up play but here is Anderson on the swivel and good save out of Fiona McNichol always lively as Amy Anderson she's just allowed so much space and time to take it on the turn at first opportunity Kira Grant trying to spot out her options picks Penman out on the edge of the box and it goes agonisingly wide for Jenna Penman, still in search of her first Hearts goal. Hunter clears. McLaren keeps it alive. Eve Donald now with a flick off the crossbar. Rather audacious there from Eve Donald. Hearts knocked United out in the fourth round last season. Smith got the equaliser. Here she is now on the ball across the face of goal and a vital touch from Fiona McNichol taking it out of the path of Georgia Timms because surely she was netting into an empty net. A bit of urgency now in the visitors' play. As Rennie hits the deck and well, she wins the free kick in shooting range. Much to United's dismay. Kira Grant, the summer acquisition from Rangers, hovering over. Will be Grant to take. And her effort just sails over Fiona McNichol. And Hearts have the lead in the Scottish Cup tie. A wonderful goal. A fantastically gifted player, Kira Grant. It's not the power or the pace, it's the precision and the placement from Kira Grant. It beats McNichol. And Hearts have the lead here. Hungry for their second. So too is Grant. She plays in Penman. Cuts inside and it sneaks beneath Fiona McNichol and Jenna Penman has her first goal for the club. What a time and what a way to grab it. Hearts desperate for that cushion. And Penman delivers. Shifting it onto her right. It just bounces in front of McNichol to evade her. Timms threads through Rennie. Well, the supporting cast are charging. McAllister awaits. Oh, but she just fluffs her lines a little bit and it sneaks beneath her. United are managing to clear it. Georgie Robb now. Oh, it's only as far as Georgia Timms. She'll have a pop. That's always high and wide, but Rebecca McAllister, she surely cannot believe her luck. Gifted an opportunity. That would have been game over for United. 
running out of time, but here is Malcolm now. Can she test Charlotte Parker-Smith? It's a simple save for the Hearts goalkeeper. She hasn't had an awful lot to do. And Heart of Midlothian progress into the fifth round of the Scottish Cup, defeating Dundee United 2 0 at Gussie Park. Eva Olid's side will be in Monday's draw. It was a really impressive performance for Hearts, Suzanne, um, and a first goal for the club for Jenna Penman. That's not a bad way to kickstart your goal scoring time at, at the club in the Scottish Cup. Yeah, definitely. I think being a striker myself, it's great to get in the, co the score sheet. Um, and what a finish it was from um, Jenna Penman. She had a few good opportunities through the game, so John Bidledge took that one and you know helped Hearts progress to the next round of the Cup. They had quite a few opportunities, Hearts, um, but there were still positives for Dungeon United to take. Yeah, I think you know defensively, I think they coped quite well um, with Hearts. You know they signed a lot of. Uh, key experienced players, Hearts, and we can see that um, in their position in the league. And yeah, I think their goalkeeper had a few good saves as well. So they could take a lot of positives from that game and hopefully take that into the league games going forward. And in terms of Hearts, they'll be eyeing up a decent run in this competition because they're doing very well in the league and they, they've really improved year on year, particularly since their promotion. Yeah, they, they've been fantastic. And I think that's, you know, credit to behind the scenes. They've obviously invested um, and they're creeping up. You know, we've, we're so used to seeing the top three Rangers, Celtic, Glasgow City, so it's great to see Hearts there, you know, coming up fourth and they invested to sign a lot of key players, like we said, you know, we've got Emma Blur Bar Brownlee, sorry, who's came from Rangers to Hearts, so yeah, I think um, if they keep progressing, then they're definitely a team to watch in this cup. Well, Hearts get their name into the draw for the fifth round. Let's take you now to a little bit of a local derby. That's some added spice to the Scottish Cup tie between Queen's Park and Partick Thistle. And underway between Queen's Park and Partick Thistle in this Scottish Cup tie. Partick Thistle looking to create something early here, working it out from the back. Can they create the first opportunity of this game as the ball comes forward? It's a good passing play as well from Partick Thistle. It comes to Lindsay Taylor. Cuts inside, inside. There's Abby Ferguson. And Partick Thistle take the lead inside 15 minutes in this game. And it's Abby Ferguson, the Celtic Loney, who puts them ahead. A lovely team move starting all the way back from the goalkeeper. And there was Abby Ferguson with a camp finish to put Partick Thistle 1-0 up. Queen's Park with some defending to do. Here's Smith to Davies. Clearance, not what she would have wanted. And Claire Doherty now with a chance to cross. Goes into the front post. There's Cara Henderson. And she flicks it in at the front post. And Partick Thistle have doubled their lead early in this game. And it's Cara Henderson with the goal. It may have taken a deflection and looped over Chloe Gibney in the Queen's Park goal. But Partick Thistle have two. Well, it's good pressure by... Sarah McLeod just forcing a rushed clearance there. Queen's Park win it back. Alex Fraser goes out wide. Can they pull one back? The ball comes into the box. Well, Cheryl McCulloch wasn't expecting it. It's bounced into the path of Abby Callaghan. And just like that, Queen's Park have one back. It was a good ball into the box. Cheryl McCulloch just wasn't able to sort her body out. And Abby Callaghan ready to pounce and into the bottom corner. Cara Henderson on the turn. Can she break into the Queen's Park box? She does. The pass across, not quite finding Partick Thistle clear. The ball will bounce around. Claim for a handball there. It will be a free kick in a dangerous area for Partick Thistle. Cara Henderson to take this one. Will she shoot? Will she cross this one, goes for goal, comes off the bar, a big chance, and it's Leah Robinson, she had the time and space, and in her first competitive start, she has her first Partick Thistle goal, well she was alert, the Queen's Park defenders weren't, and she had the time and space to chest it down and pick her spot, Partick Thistle restore their two goal lead. DL goes long. It's headed down into the path of Kearney. 
who looks to make something happen. It goes through to Callaghan. Will she go for the cross? She goes for goal, and it's into the path of Caitlin McKee. And Queen's Park have a goal back again. It's 3-2, and the substitute making the required impact. Queen's Park cut the deficit to one once again, and it was an easy finish for Caitlin McKee, who will take those all day long. Queen's Park looking to play out from the back. But they do play themselves into danger. Rachel Donaldson goes for goal. And that is absolutely spectacular from Rachel Donaldson. She had no right to shoot from there, but she went for goal. And Chloe Gibney spotted off her line. And Donaldson, a wonderful strike. Gibney tracking back, unable to get a hand on it. And now 4-2 to Partick Thistle. Thistle looking to put this game out of sight. From the corner, goes to the back post, it's off the back post from Faulkner. The ball banding around in the box, there's Leah Robinson again! And it certainly is a dream debut for Leah Robinson. Her second goal of the match, and surely putting Partick Thistle through to the next round. The defender on her first Partick Thistle appearance has two, and Partick Thistle have five. Well that will be full time, Partick Thistle through to the next round. 5-2 winners over Queen's Park. Well, Suzanne, another really entertaining Scottish Cup tie. Um, ultimately, Partick Thistle's quality shone through in the end, but Queen's Park made a real game of it. Yeah, they sure did. And, you know, that's credit to Queen's Park, you know, coming up, competing against, you know, these teams. And I think Partick Thistle, the quality they've got through the squad, um, I think they were maybe nervous going into the second half, thinking, you know, to see the game out. But, look, they've got the quality like they've shown for the two late goals in the end to, to see the game out and get through to the next round. Yeah, and what a debut for Leah Robinson. Um, a couple of goals to mark it. Yeah, and I think that's great. You know, we always look to, you know, us forwards, as we say, to, to finish the game and get these goals. But, you know, being a fullback, um, she's got herself in there from set pieces and got two vital goals for part of Thistle to put them into the next round. So that's great for her. Thistle are doing very well in, in SWPL1, sitting comfortably mid-table. Um, they also had that really good run in this competition to the semi-finals last season. They'll certainly be eyeing up something similar this time around. Yeah, of course they will, Lely. And, you know, an added incentive is to play here at Hamden, so they'll want to make sure that they get to at least the semi-finals like they did last year. And, you know, I think they've got the quality throughout their squad. They've got some key players in there to hopefully take them to the semi-finals, if not to the finals. So, yeah, good luck to them in, the, in this run in the Cup. Yeah, huge incentive for all the teams at this stage of the competition, right? We're going to round up a few of the other ties off the fourth round, and we start with the holders Celtic, who had a trip to Falkirk. Fran Alonso named a strong Celtic team for the trip to Falkirk and his side only had to wait five minutes for the opener. Natalie Ross expertly guiding the ball into the top corner. Amy Gallagher and Claire O'Riordan had the hoops 4-0 up and they added a fifth just before the break. Gallagher will claim it, although the last touch appeared to come off a Falkirk body. There were no doubts over the scorer of the sixth goal though, with Shen Menglu cutting inside and delicately chipping the ball off the far post. Falkirk goalkeeper Rachel Pirie was impressive throughout, but she was helpless to deny Gallagher another late goal as Celtic rounded off a comprehensive win. Dryber Athletic may be bottom of the championship, but they almost took the lead against SWPL 2 side St Johnston, who had Becky Cameron to thank with an excellent penalty save. St Johnston's pressure, though, did eventually tell. Fern Newbegin's first time finish, breaking the deadlock. and they would add a late second to complete a 2 win. East Fife were given a scare after going behind against Grampian ladies, but after Brody Rigby-Wilson's well-taken equaliser, they never looked back. Mirren Lumsden's sweet strike was the pick of the goals in the second half as the Fifers picked up a fifth-round match trip against Hibs. It took top flight Aberdeen over half an hour to break down a stubborn Hutchison Vale defence, but when they did, it was the easiest of goals. Bailey Hutchison tapping home from close range. That goal may have been simple, but Hannah Stewart's run was anything but. The forward showed skill and pace on two occasions. Here she is, bearing down on goal. And only a fine fingertip save denied her a certain goal of the season contender. Stuart's trickery was at the heart of it again in the second half. Here she goes. 
This time though, she picked out Maya Christie, who blasted home to send the Dons into the fifth round. Central girls have enjoyed a dream cup run since the preliminary round, but there was to be no upset against Rossvale. Morgan Anderson's goal sent the championship side on their way to a 3-1 victory. Gert Cairn are flying in the SWPL2 and they frustrated Motherwell for half an hour before a moment of magic from Kayla McDonald and Gua broke the deadlock for the home side. And it took until the 85th minute for Motherwell to extend their lead as dead ball specialist Katie Rice curled home a long range free kick to put the match beyond Gert Cairn. That goal may have been spectacular, but Glasgow women's match against Inverness turned into a goal of the round shootout all on its own. Louisa Boy's thumping effort from 30 yards making it 3-0. Inverness hit back though with substitute Scott cutting onto her right foot and firing a looping strike over the goalkeeper. And if that wasn't far out enough, how about this free kick from Shelley Campbell who found the net from 40 yards plus? Glasgow women have endured a tough season in SWPL1, but they will hope the cup proves a distraction. Hannah Cunningham's 25 yarder looked a mere tap in as far as this match was concerned. Well, some more cracking cup ties there, Suzanne. Celtic, the holders, they're comfortably through. Um, they are not going to want to give up this trophy lightly at all. And you could see that. Um, they certainly went into the game, despite it being a team below them in, in the, the league pyramid. They went with that attitude and mentality. Yeah, and I think that's great, you know, and I think that's credit to Celtic as well. You know, they can't get complacent going into these cup games and, you know, credit to Falkirk. They came and they tried their best. And look, it's experience for them to play in against you know, strong op opposition like Celtic. So they'll take the positives from that and, you know, use that into their league. But yeah, strong performance for Celtic. Some great goals, but I am going to highlight one. That free kick from Shelley Campbell, Glasgow women against Inverness, Caledonian Thistle. That was um, from distance, I think you could say. Have you ever scored a couple of them? No, I was a little fox in the box, <laughs> Ellie, as you know, we played together. There's no chance I, I would even have been I wonder there. maybe in your younger years if you'd nah, thrown a few nah, of them out. No. Certainly haven't, so yeah, <laughs> well, it was a great strike. Plenty. It was a great strike from, from her, so yeah, she'll definitely be buzzing after that one. Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's round up some more of the ties from the weekend, and we start with an, with an absolute thriller as Air United took on Morton. Without a doubt, the tie of the round took place at Townhead as Air United edged out Morton in an all-championship affair. It was the hosts who took an early lead, Claire Doherty drilling in an indirect free kick. Air were 3-1 up at one point, but Morton hit back twice, Bell's cross evading everyone, and it finished 3-all in normal time. Morton then got their noses in front, but Doherty levelled again to four spot kicks. Well Four all was also the scoreline on penalties before Morton finally missed with their fifth and final attempt. And with that, the teams were finally separated. Whiteside rifling home the winning penalty to set up a fifth round tie against Glasgow Women. From an all-championship to an all-SWPL tie as Glasgow City hosted Hamilton, with Beatrice Prades Insa breaking the deadlock in spectacular fashion. And it proved to be a resounding win for interim boss Leanne Ross, captain Hayley Lauder scoring the pick of the goals in the 4-0 victory. City reached the final last year. They were hoping to go one step further this time round. Montrose are the top scorers in the SWPL2 this season and they showed exactly why as they had too much for Bonnie Rigg. Lauren Brown and Charlotte Gammy both grabbed hat-tricks and the victory was rounded off in the second half by this goal of the round contender.
Hibernian reached the final of the Sky Sports Cup and they'll be hoping to go one better in the Scottish Cup. Kirsty Morrison shot in off the post, put them on course for a comfortable win over Spartans. Bottom Muir were the hosts for the fourth round draw and they were paired in a local derby against Edinburgh Caledonia. After a tight first half, this will cut loose in the second, firing in eight goals to set up a mouth-watering tie at home against Celtic. In a goal-laden round, West Dyke against Kilmarnock was the anomaly. After a goalless 90 minutes, Kilmarnock eventually found the breakthrough, Monica Harty tapping in to settle the contest. Yeah! Malky Thompson's Rangers are unbeaten domestically and already have the Sky Sports Cup in their trophy cabinet this season. They began their Scottish Cup campaign with a comfortable win against Stirling University. After Rachel McLaughlin had set up Kirsty Howitt for the opener, Megan Bell capped her first start of the season off with a wonderful long-range strike to extend the lead. After further goals for McCleary and Arnott, it was a combination of McLaughlin and Arnott who combined again, and the Jairs finished the half with a six-goal advantage. McCleary completed her hat-trick in the second half, while 16-year-old Emma Watson's sweet strike completed the scoring. Well, Suzanne, Glasgow City, Rangers, Hibs all safely making it through to the fifth round. It's no surprise, really, but in terms of the team that you won two of the, your Scottish Cup trophies with, Hibs, a real opportunity for them to perhaps um, bounce back after the defeat in the Sky Sports Cup final. Yeah, I think it's great for them, you know, to progress. I think they're going through a wee bit of transition at the moment. They've lost a lot of key experienced players and they've got a lot of young, great quality young players coming through, you know, from the academy, which is great to see. Um, but obviously they've had to gel together and maybe taken a wee step back to go forward. So, yeah, I'm looking for Hibs to do, to do well in this tournament. And I think they will, especially, like you said, of the disappointment of the Sky Sports Cup. So I think they'll bounce back and progress well in, in this cup. OK, well, that rounds up all the action from the fourth round. We will leave you, though, with a reminder of the draw for the fifth round of the Scottish Cup. These matches will all take place on the weekend of Sunday, the 12th of February. Make sure you follow at Scottish Cup on Twitter for all the latest news and features from this year's Scottish Cup competition. Well, thanks, Suzanne, for joining me today and uh, all the best to all the teams taking part in the fifth round of the Scottish Cup. We will see you again soon.